Hello, welcome to this lesson from the GCSE P portal. Today we're going to be doing antagonistic muscle pairs. And what we're going to start with are the definitions of six things which you need to know for your exam. Now I've put this line down the middle of the board here because when it comes to remembering these definitions, try to remember them in pairs because quite often one is the definition of the opposite of the other. Okay, so we're going to start off with antagonist and agonist. And to define these or to explain to you what these are, when we think of muscles, we have to remember that they can only ever pull on a bone. Okay, a muscle can't push a bone. Yes, we can produce pushing movements with our body as a whole, but that's often caused by the lever systems, which we'll cover in another video. It's because of the lever systems that a muscle pulling on a bone can generate a pushing action. So one quick example would be uh, the tricep extension. So if you wanted to push something, yes, it feels like your elbow is acting in a way that you're pushing an object, but it's because the tricep is pulling on the end of the bone, which is then levering itself around the humerus, the tricep pulls, and it levers the arm forwards. So it looks like we're pushing, it feels like we're pushing, but the bone, it's, uh, sorry, the muscle itself is actually pulling. And if a muscle can only ever pull, that means once it reaches its you know, fully contracted length, how is it ever going to actually go back to, well, go back to the, uh, the position it came from? Well, it needs a partner. It needs another muscle to pull the bone in the reverse action to reset it. So we have an antagonist and an agonist. That makes up the antagonistic pair. So a nice simple one would be the bicep and the triceps. Okay, so if I wanted to bend my elbow or flex my elbow, my bicep would be the one to pull my arm into that position. The bicep can't put that arm back the other way. Gravity could, but the bicep itself couldn't push that arm. So what I'd need is a pair or an antagonist to the bicep, which is the tricep underneath. So the bicep, which is the agonist, it shortens and it causes the movement. The antagonist underneath then has its turn to contract and it reverses that movement. So muscles come in pairs. One of them is the agonist, which is causing the movement, and the other is the antagonist, which is relaxing to allow the movement to happen. So I'll go back to the elbow. If from this position, my bicep is working as the agonist and it pulls that arm up, then it must mean that the antagonist, the tricep, has gone from this short position and it's relaxed and it's lengthened to allow that movement to happen. So the agonist causes it, I'll put this one here, agonist cause or causes and the antagonist allows. It lets that movement action happen. And a muscle is constantly switching between the two. The bicep isn't always the agonist and the tricep isn't always the antagonist they switch roles whenever the movement action reverses. So when that elbow flexes, bicep agonist, tricep antagonist, whenever it's a tricep extension or an elbow extension, the tricep is now the agonist and the bicep is the antagonist because the bicep is allowing that, that bone to move in that direction, okay? So the agonist causes the movement and the antagonist allows the movement. The next pair of definitions, so we've got antagonist, agonist. Next up, we've got prime mover and synergist. Okay, synergist isn't essential for your exam, but it goes well with this pairing here. Because the prime mover is the muscle primarily involved with causing a movement. So if I were to do a bicep curl, for example, then the bicep is the prime mover. That's the muscle contributing the most to that movement action at the jaw. Okay. But if I were to lift up something very heavy, it's not the only muscle that's actually contracting. There's lots of muscles contributing to that movement action. The synergists are the ones that help. So they're the ones which might support the prime mover in pulling on that bone, or they might contract stationary and support other bones to prevent them from moving. So for example, from side on, if I was lifting something heavy, okay, and flexing my elbow there, if this was heavy, as I lifted it, my shoulder joint might roll forwards because of the weight and because of the way all the force is moving through my body. My rear delts 
my latissimus dorsi and other muscles in the back, which you don't really need to know for your GCSE, but they're there to help anchor that shoulder back in its position so that when I do lift up that arm, it moves in one movement action, in one plane. The shoulder joint isn't getting pulled out of position during that movement action. So the prime mover is the one contributing to the most, or sorry, contributing the most to the movement action you're currently performing. Whereas the synergist are slightly smaller muscles or less involved muscles, but they're still working, they're still contracting to stabilize the location of the body that is moving. Okay, so in the case of that elbow flexion, bicep is the prime mover, and we've got the rear delts and the latissimus dorsi, they're helping contract and anchor that shoulder joint in its position, so that the humerus doesn't rock forward, it stays in its position, and the joint stays safe. So we've got antagonist, agonist, agonist causes, antagonist allows. The prime mover, I'm gonna put here responsible, responsible, and the synergist, I'm gonna put helper. Okay, it's the assistant to the prime mover. And the last two definitions that we need is now to do with contraction types, because every single muscle, yes, all muscles contract, and contraction leads to bones to move, but not every contraction is made equal. We've got two different types. We have isotonic and isometric. Just ignore the green and red here for the time being. We've got isotonic contractions and isometric contractions. Isotonic is when the muscle is moving. Well, not so much moving, but when the muscle is lengthening or shortening as it's under tension. Okay, I'll say that again. An isotonic muscle contraction is when the muscle that's working is getting longer or is getting shorter. An isometric muscle contraction is when the muscle is working and under tension, but it's neither getting longer or shorter. For example, if you were to have a, a pull-up bar, and you have to jump on, and you have to pull yourself up, and then lower yourself back down again, your muscles are constantly moving. So you're either in a, cons well, a shortening phase or a lengthening phase. However, if you were to get halfway and then hold that pull up and not move, you know, you're trying to stay as still as you can, your muscles are now working isometrically. The way I remember this, or have remembered it, is the word tonic. Okay, if you've ever seen a bottle of tonic water, it's like sparkling water, you'll know that it's got bubbles in and bubbles move. So isotonic muscle contractions is when there is movement involved inside the muscle during that contraction. Isometric is when it's stationary. It's stationary. So there's no movement in the muscle. Okay, it's just holding it. It's under tension, but it's holding it. It's not lengthening, it's not shortening. So isotonic we know is a moving contraction. Now we've got the two different types, lengthening and shortening. The two words for that are concentric contraction and eccentric contraction. For concentric, that's where the muscle gets shorter. Or concentric, I remember it as it coils up like a spring. It coils up, it gets shorter, it goes in on itself during the contraction. Eccentric is when the muscle is working or controlling the movement but it's getting longer, or it's elongating. E for elongating, C for coiling up. Concentric coils up, eccentric is getting longer, it elongates in length, okay? And there are the three different types of muscle contraction. If you're getting confused on this, because quite often you're asked to analyze movements and what muscle is, con uh, is contracting how, the way I've always explained it, and the way in my mind, I just this is how I just sort of see it now, and it makes sense. If you're winning against gravity, a muscle is often working concentrically. I'll explain that again. If you're beating gravity, so if I was in a squat position and I stood up, the muscles which are causing the movement are working concentrically. They're getting shorter in their contraction to beat gravity. Because if a muscle is getting shorter, it must mean that it's overcoming the force that's being put on it. It's overcoming the resistance that's being put on the muscle. If the muscle is getting longer, however, and it's, con and it's contracting eccentrically, that must mean the resistance or force that the muscle is under, it's too much for the muscle to bear. That's why it's stretching out. So on my downward phase of a squat, my quadriceps, they're getting longer, they're getting stretched because I'm losing against gravity. 
Okay, same thing with the pull-up. There's the bar, I jump on, as I pull up, okay, I'm beating gravity, I'm rising up from the ground, I'm beating gravity, the muscle that's working, the prime mover, or the prime movers, the biceps, because I'm beating gravity, they must go from a long position into a short position. They're coiling up, which means that they're contracting concentrically because they're coiling up. So just remember that, if you're beating gravity, the prime mover or the agonist is likely to be working concentrically. If you're lowering something down or you're losing against gravity, the prime mover, the one controlling the movement, responsible for the movement, is likely to be working eccentrically. And that is or are antagonistic pairs. Antagonist and agonist, one that allows the movement to happen, one that causes the movement to happen. The prime mover and the synergist. The prime mover is responsible for the movement action. They're the one most in control. And then the synergist are the little helpers. Then we've got muscle contractions, two different types. Isotonic, think of tonic bubbles for movement. Isometric is when a muscle is stationary. And then within the movement contractions, we've got two types, the lengthening or the elongating eccentric type, or the coiling up shortening concentric types. And that's that. I hope you found that useful, and I hope to hear from or work with you very soon.